Hello and welcome to the second uh, video on satellite imagery. This video is going to deal with the different types of satellite imagery and more specifically it's going to deal with visible satellite imagery. Visible satellite imagery measures solar radiation or sunlight. Uh, the sunlight that's being reflected off of objects in our Earth's atmosphere and also from the surface of the Earth. And there are sensors on satellites, ghost satellites, that are looking at particular wavelengths, specifically 0.55 to about 0.75 microns. And that's uh, what we call visible sunlight. Uh, that's what our eyes are attuned to. Uh, the resolution of uh, the ghost satellite imagery is very good. Um, with the new, uh, new satellites uh, after ghosts are, they increase the resolution or you can see smaller things. And it used to be one kilometer, now it's down to a half a kilometer of re resolution. Uh, that means that um, this, on the Earth you, or in the Earth's atmosphere, you can see objects that are about a half a kilometer. A half a kilometer is about 1500 feet across. So that's a pretty darn good rev resolution. And remember that the sun is only shining during the day, at least on the uh, daylight side of the Earth. So the visible satellite imagery is only available during daylight. Uh, you can't see anything, of course, on the dark side of the Earth. Now, we talk about reflectivity. Meteorologists use a a special term when we talk about what's reflected off of the Earth, we call it albedo. And albedo simply is the amount of sunlight that's reflected off the surface of the Earth. Um, Go satellite, visible satellite imagery uses the convention that if the albedo is very high, if there's a lot of reflected sunlight, then it'll be plotted as white or shades of gray. Things that are much lower in reflectivity or have a low albedo will appear dark or black. So objects on the Earth and also in the Earth's atmosphere don't reflect 100% or zero. There's shades of gray in between. So thunderstorms, of course, reflect the most sunlight and the reason is because they're very thick clouds. So 92% of all visible sunlight that strikes a thunderstorm is reflected out to space. And fresh snow is up there also, but as the snow gets dirtier, you can see the albedo or reflectivity decreases. So fresh snow will snow show up uh, pretty close to white and the same as thunderstorms. Uh, thunderstorms, though, reflect the most. And then down on the other end, you can see water surfaces don't reflect much, which is kind of contrary to what you believe. But if you're looking at uh, sunlight or you're looking at the water surface at an angle, it will reflect uh, sunlight. But the satellites are looking straight down. And as a result, uh, not much uh, reflectivity occurs over water surfaces. Notice also that forests don't reflect a lot. So if you're looking at uh, Minnesota, northern Minnesota, where there's lots of trees, that'll show up as uh, very close to black or very, very dark. Everything else is kind of shades of gray. Here's an example of a visible satellite image. On most satellite image, visible satellite images, they have a scale at the bottom. The scale is the percentage of reflected sunlight, and that is your albedo. So the things that you can see on a visible satellite image, some features are things such as terrain, snow, and shadows. And I've got examples of all these, and we'll step through these. First, here's terrain, and this is uh, the upper Midwest. Uh, this is a very good resolution, and this is on a day when there is very, very few clouds. There are some clouds in uh, northwestern Minnesota, but North Dakota and South Dakota and Wyoming, Montana are clear, and you can make things out. You can make out terrain features, such as Devil's Lake or Lake Sakakawea. You can even see the Black Hills of South Dakota, the Bighorn Mountains in Wyoming, or even you can see the Turtle Mountains uh, in North Dakota, straddling the North Dakota uh, and also Manitoba border. And also you can make out um, other water features, such as uh, Lake Missouri, uh, not Lake, but uh, the Missouri River. And uh, you can also see other rivers. Remember that 
that water does not reflect a lot of sunlight, so that'll show up as black. Now, as far as the state boundaries, those you cannot see from space. Those are computer generated. Be careful, sometimes um, the file gets messed up um, when they plot the state boundaries. And as a result, you'll see state boundaries all over the place. So you have to kind of take that with a grain of salt. Here's an example of snow. This uh, snow was in April. It was a snow swath, a late season snow event, and it covered uh, Nebraska and also South Dakota and into Minnesota. It looks like though into Minnesota you can see clouds, but in South Dakota you notice that the snow that fell into the Missouri River melted, so the Missouri River is showing up dark in the snow band. And also you can see the Black Hills of South Dakota, there are a lot of trees there, so the snow falls between between the trees and remember that trees do not have very high albedo. Here's another example of snow. This is from January of 2017 and this covers a much wider area. You can see that it's covering all of North Dakota and also South Dakota. As you move farther south where the water is unfrozen, where the lakes and rivers are unfrozen, you can start to see those show up through the snow. But in North Dakota, uh, the snow falls on everything, including the rivers and lakes because they're frozen and they don't show up as well. Also, you can see in Minnesota, uh, the frozen lakes have snow on them, but you can see also a dark region, and that doesn't mean that dark region in northern Minnesota doesn't mean that there's no snow. It means that the snow fell between the trees, and the trees, of course, show up darker. And then another thing that you can see is shadows. Shadows show up really well. Here's some examples of thunderstorms, and you can see as the sun sets to the west uh, and uh, off to the uh, left in this photo, you can see shadows that are being cast by the thunderstorms across North Dakota, South Dakota, and Nebraska. So those are some features that you can see, but let's take a look at a few clouds. And these clouds are very useful in helping identify hazards for aviation weather. First, we'll start out with uh, standing lenticular clouds, ACSLs. Here's a couple examples. Here's an example of ACSLs um, across uh, Wyoming. And of course, ACSLs are common with mountain wave. So if you have trapped mountain waves, um, typically you will have lenticular clouds. And these lenticular clouds uh, looks like they're starting in Montana, but they're spreading over Wyoming. Here's another example of lenticular clouds. And these lenticulars uh, you can see across the northeastern part of the United States, specifically New York, Pennsylvania. You can see them also very well across uh, uh, Colorado, uh, Colorado, Connecticut, and also Vermont. And uh, they have, they do have mountains back east, the Appalachian Mountains, and these are low-level uh, lenticular clouds. This picture represents cold air spilling out across the East Coast, cold air going across uh, Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. You can more or less make out the cold front pushing off into the Atlantic, but as the cold air moves over the warm ground, this picture was taken in October, you notice these little white dots all across uh, North Carolina, Virginia, maybe even back into Tennessee and Kentucky. And those little white dots are cumulus clouds. So this is what meteorologists call open cellular convection. And open cellular convection implies convective turbulence for pilots flying at low altitudes. Here is another picture of cumulus clouds. This is over the Midwestern United States of Illinois and also Indiana. This is taken during the summertime, so the ground heats up and thermals rise. And as the air rises to uh, temperature cools to the dew point, um, as it rises, you get the formation of cumulus clouds. So these cumulus clouds imply convective turbulence in the lower layers of the atmosphere. Here is a satellite image of fog. Remember, this is visual, visible satellite imager, imagery. Fog typically forms early in the morning, radiation fog, and that's what you see here across North Dakota on the, this particular morning. If we take a look at the uh, surface observations for this particular day, uh, you can see that there are reports of visibilities less than a quarter mile. 
and also there are ceilings that are reported as uh, 1 to 200 feet so we have very low IFR conditions. The reason the clouds are showing up as gray on the visible satellite image is because this is early in the morning and the sun is just beginning to rise so you're not getting a really good reflection off of, of sunlight off of those clouds, off of those uh, the fog areas. Here's an example of fog. The fog is in western North Dakota, western South Dakota, and eastern Montana. You can see a lot of different texture in the clouds. Um, you can tell the difference between high clouds and low clouds. As a matter of fact, uh, the fog is filling in lower areas, and you can see the black hills and the little notch that is uh, set out by the Black Hills because the fog can't make it up over the Black Hills. So you've got this little notch that represents higher terrain. Here you can see round blobs, and usually during the summertime when you see round blobs, those are thunderstorms. Thunderstorms tend to be round, and in this case they are pretty large. These anvils are spreading out. Uh, these are still young storms as they get larger and older. They start to create anvil clouds that don't look round anymore. Over the past several years, the United States has experienced quite a bit of smoke across uh, much of the U.S., both the east and west coasts of the United States, and even the central part of the United States. Smoke shows up very well on visible satellite imagery. Here is some smoke off of the west coast. The winds are blowing from the west across Oregon out into the Pacific. You can see that the smoke is very dense, of course, um, very close to the fires, but as you move farther away, uh, the density of the particles decreases and the reflectivity uh, turns from a bright white to a, a kind of a darker gray. Here's another image of smoke across the central United States from Canadian fires uh, where the winds are blowing out of the north. You can see on this visible satellite image that you don't have bright white uh, for the smoke and the reason, of course, is because the smoke is dispersed, the density of the particles um, is lower, and as a result, it's only reflecting a certain amount, not a lot of uh, sunlight, but only a, a partial amount of sunlight. So as a result, it tends to be a little bit grayer, but you can definitely see where the smoke is on this image. This image is from several years ago. This is from an older uh, ghost satellite image, probably Ghost 8 or Ghost 9. But what it shows is uh, on visible satellite imagery, you can see volcanic ash. In particular, this one uh, was in Indonesia. You can see the winds are out of the west. You can see how the volcanic ash plume widens as it spreads downwind. Here's a volcano. This is one that occurred down in Chile. On visible satellite imagery, you can see the plume. And of course, the plume gets, uh, the volcanic ash plume gets uh, less dense as you move away from the volcano, closer to it. Uh, typically, you have higher concentrations. Uh, volcanic ash is detrimental to turbine airplanes, so it's a hazard that needs to be avoided. Another thing that you can see at high altitudes is kind of like a lenticular cloud, but they're called transverse bands. And transverse bands are caused by the jet stream. A wave sets up in the jet stream. And when you get wave at high altitudes, it produces clear air turbulence. So you can see uh, in uh, South Carolina and also moving off the East Coast into the Atlantic Ocean, these little bands, these little wave clouds that are producing turbulence. Here's another satellite image. It looks like it's a combination of uh, both infrared and visible, but uh, this is of clear air turbulence as indicated by the transverse bands. Once again, uh, the wave clouds set up perpendicular to the wind flow. In this case, uh, the transverse bands stretch from um, uh, near Omaha or uh, Nebraska across Iowa and up into Wisconsin and the winds are blowing basically from the southwest to the northeast and that area had a sigmet out for severe turbulence at altitude this is from flight level 200 to 400 so when you see transverse bands that indicates clear air turbulence so you really can't tell the height of objects on visible satellite imagery unless you infer it from shadows 
When you see shadows, when you see uh, darker areas that are cast either on the ground or lower layer clouds, it starts to give you an idea about the height and the depth of the clouds. That's the end of the second video. The third one will deal with infrared satellite imagery.